Hello and welcome to episode 54 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that cloud computing has become the principal paradigm for enterprise applications as businesses modernize their computing and networking architectures. Cloud native architectures are the principal target environments. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. And this is an article we're talking about it was written by a, a good friend of mine, James Cambellis, so, uh, who also writes with me at InfoWorld. So I thought, it was, uh, thought he did a good job on this, so I figure it's uh, worth the show to talk about it. Yeah, he's a great writer as well. I love his stuff too. So the opening question then, Dave, what else will be happening in 2019 that you think the C-suites will be need to pay attention to? Yeah, I think the big uh, thing that's going to be happening is going to be, um, you know, besides the stuff James mentioned, we'll talk about that as well. But, you know, ultimately, it's going to be dealing with the manage of the envi- you know, management of the environments, the complexity that, you know, it's kind of forthcoming. I think people are feeling the pain now. Uh, by the end of 2019, they're going to be feeling the pain, uh, pain full on. And ultimately, they need to figure out management tools, approaches, you know, different technologies to do cloud ops, how cloud ops integrates with DevOps and um, security integrates with all that stuff. And, you know, we just have a nightmare of things we have to deal with in front of us. And I think that the C-suite should really be putting that stuff on the radar of, of the um, of, of the IT folks to make sure that they're prepared to hit it. And I don't think many of the shops right now are ill-prepared. They're going to end up hitting a tipping point where suddenly lots of things go wrong. They can't manage their environments effectively just because too many uh, existing legacy systems have not gone away and we've hit a tipping point in moving applications into the cloud, cloud native or not, and we just have no way of managing the information, the data, the governance, things like that until we kind of figure out an overarching approach on how we're going to do it. And so that's going to be a big issue, I think, 2019, 2020. I even gave it a name. I call it cloud complexity management. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, that's a great name for it because it, the complexities are just growing, like you say, and, and people are getting tied up in knots. And the last thing you want to do is spend the next year or this year, uh, untangling those knots and really not moving forward. Uh, and, and one thing I'd like to add to the, the, this list of things actually is uh, the awareness and how people, uh, C-suites, look at the recruitment drive, how they look at you know, you know, bringing that talent on board and, and knowing you're, um, you've got something that's going to not only support the career but equally you know, tick the boxes for that person from an enjoyment point of view as well. So making sure that uh, I think a, an HR drive or a recruitment drive or maybe looking at how HR can be um, partnered with a, a third party or just identifying how to get the best people in. I think that's uh, something that I would love to, to see on the list for C-suites. What do you think? Yeah, it is. And we're going to talk about that in the next show, the training show, um, because we're seeing some you know, kind of desperation on that side. And ultimately, I think that that's where you're going to end up solving the problems. If you get people that are smart enough to figure things out on your behalf versus you having to figure things out directly uh, and then walking people through stuff, you're going to be much better off. I mean, I I think the secret to success with all this is hiring a layer of very intelligent, very creative people and be able to foster promote the the goodness of those people can bring the organization and their ability to kind of solve problems. And I think that's not on the radar screen enough. And I think the assumption is, is that there's nobody out there to hire and the, you know, it's a very, very much a seller's market. It's kind of crazy, but we're limiting our ability to take advantage of technology based on we're limiting our ability to who we hire and who we bring into the organization and how we do training and how we promote and foster and, you know, love the people who we, you know, brought into the organization that are now our employees. And I think that, uh, the C-suites really kind of need to figure that out. If they haven't, I think they're going to be hurting for certain in 2019, 2020. I think people are going to end up uh, voting with their feet, and uh, a lot of the better talented uh, IT people aren't going to work for the organization. You know, I always look at these organizations that don't do well with uh, treating uh, the rank-and-file IT staffers, uh, the people who actually solve their problems, as uh, having an issue where suddenly they just hemorrhage people and hemorrhage talent that they really can't get it back. And they end up uh, sinking the company. They, they can't keep up with mergers and acquisitions. They can't innovate. They can't, you know, basically push the thing forward. And, you know, we know the brands that have gone away in the last couple of years and 
if you look at the IT organizations, that's exactly what happened. They were hemorrhaging talent. They couldn't get anything done. They couldn't get applications developed. They couldn't get technology in place, which would take the company to the next level. Couldn't get their websites to scale. And ultimately, they just killed the company. So that's kind of the first death knell of, of uh, companies that are going under. I would hit the panic button where I was in the C-suite and I saw people in IT uh, leaving in droves and not hiring the talent to replace them that we needed to take the company to the next level. As far as I'm concerned, that means uh, the engineers are running the spaceship into the, into a planet. You know, it's just not going to work out. Truly, truly. And another aspect as well, I think, which has become uh, certainly on my radar of recent uh, from a consultancy point of view is, is looking at mobile applications and, and how the user is interacting with the brand through mobile application uh, and that making that sort of seamless customer experience and a customer experience that people actually really enjoy being a part of uh, and, and it just seems to work really well. I think not getting that combination right and not being able to do some form of you know real, re, real-time development and troubleshooting uh, I think is, is, is also a big deal moving forward. Uh, I know it's been a deal for a while since apps have been a major thing, but it's amazing how much how much people haven't actually, you know, got that focus on making sure that mobile development and uh, that user experience is key. Yeah, it's it's absolutely important, it, and it's funny. I was, uh, you know, on involved in a panel of uh, people in the retailer industry, and the reality is, you could tell who was doing well in the retail industry by who had an app who had an app on that ran on Android and iPhone that people you know, thought kind of knocked it out of the park. And organizations, big retailers, some of the home improvement companies here, I'm not gonna name any specifically, but their applications are absolutely abysmal to use. I used one over the weekend and you know, try to buy a fish tape you know, to pull wires through a wall. And um, it it's just leaves you with a bad taste in your mouth. You're never going to use that application, go to their website, um, you know, basically why even walk into the store. And I think if people start understanding, you know, how much impactful that stuff is now, as far as the, the user experience, the customer experience versus, you know, where it was 10 years ago, we we're just amazed we could order things online or order things on our phone. You know, it's really, you know, makes people, you know, rethink how they're, you know, dealing and interacting with the customer, the digitization of things. I'm kind of, a you know, taken back by, the amount of neglect that's uh, you know that's on these applications and the user experiences out there. I think 90% of the people are going to interact with your company via some sort of a mobile device. Yeah, we don't put our time and effort into making sure that application is the best it can possibly be, but we're spending time and money on marketing flyers in the Sunday paper that, quite frankly, no one reads and probably sh- you know just go right into the recycler. So true. And the the way I look at it is, and I thought about this, there's a great analogy that, you know, back in the day, you'd have one high street shop to to represent one brand, etc., or one outlet store or something. If you look at an app that can be replicated and downloaded billions of times, effectively, if you've got billions of devices that are Android or or iPhone or whatever, um, or iOS, that, that you've actually got billions of shops. You haven't just got you know one shop on the high street because every your shop is your app you know so if you've got all of these devices you've got a shop on every in every in every particular every pocket of every individual that has that device potentially depending on obviously the size of the brand and, and your target audience but you know so you could have a billion shops if you get your app wrong what's that really costing your business? I think it can kill your business. I, re- I really do. I think that uh, we're at a point now where you can. Um, hurt your brand um, to the point where you can't recover if you put out an application, mobile application that people can't use and don't view as something desirable to take, to take care. So you got to remember you're interacting with the customers with your storefronts of your brick and mortar business. So, uh, but even Amazon's a brick and mortar business now. So everybody has some aspect of that. And so we're kind of delight them in there, but even then the mobile applications really kind of take precedence because when we go into a modern brick and mortar business, we can be guided by the mobile application. They can show us down the right aisles, find us the right thing. Always makes me nuts when I can't find something, you know, a big box store. And the ability to pull out a phone and type in what I want and have them send me to the right place. And by the way, know where I am, know who I am, know what I'm doing, and know exactly the kind of part that, you know, that they need to make happen. That's suddenly a valuable experience to me. Uh, but um, we're not taking things into account where we're, you know, trying to take the businesses to the next level and really kind of thinking how these things are really going to set us apart. And so we're putting a minimal amount of investment into mobile applications, uh, website, you know, somewhat, but, you know, obviously people are still going to the mobile world. 
We're not uh, spending the time and money we need to take to basically study how these applications can be better and continuously improved. And then not leveraging the right enabling technologies such as cloud computing to kind of bring these things to the next level. Yeah, it's, it's, if you get it wrong, it's the perfect storm for disaster and, uh, and just going under, losing everyone. Losing everyone's interest in the mobile world, not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. But it moves us on nicely to your top three tips for this week, Dave. So uh, if you'd like to share those with us, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, number one is don't become part of the trends out there. And so if you see the trend is, uh, you know, everybody else is moving someplace such as cloud native databases, you know, uh, you know, moving to, you know, SaaS based systems, those are fine, but you don't necessarily need to be part of that. You're a unique company unto yourself and what your priorities are may be completely different from the companies down the street. We have a tendency to kind of uh, move with the crowd uh, in IT now, and even in business now, the C-suite levels now are looking at this, and so they're considering best practices by their competitors and best practices by close, uh, closely related businesses in their same sector as being what they need to do, and I, I think that's absolutely the wrong thing to do. Your unique business, you need to figure out what you need to do specifically that's innovative and, and innovative and creative to kind of take your business to the next level. I see this uh, mistake made everywhere. Uh, everywhere. Like, well, this, these guys are doing this, we, these guys are doing this. We want to be like Google. We want to be like Apple. We want to be like Netflix. You're not going to be like Net Netflix or Google or Apple. You need to be the best tire distributor you can be. You need to be uh, the, you know, the best uh, retailer you can be. And you need to figure out how to leverage technology as a force multiplier to make that happen. Whether it exists in a trend or not, it shouldn't really make a difference. Uh, next is don't listen to dumb people. Um, and I, I keep fighting this all the time as people write things in the press and analysts. I mean, I understand these, you're really looking for guidance from people who you view are smarter than yourself. And the reality is you're getting mostly bad information out there. And uh, even if you're looking at the survey data that's typically self-serving to a particular vendor or provider, that's sponsoring the article or white paper you're listening to. If you're looking for opinions, um, you know, such as moving to private cloud, things like that, that may be contraindicated for what you're looking to do, you need to basically question those. And you know, I'm not necessarily, you know, making a flippant, uh, you know, flippant comment that people out there are actually dumb, but they're not smart around what your business is and where you need to take things to the next level. And that's a that's a journey you need to basically do on your own. And don't be afraid to try new things. I mean, that sounds like a you know mother apple pie and Chevrolet, but I run into lots of businesses that are absolutely so risk adverse they're stymied. They can't move, you know, get out of their own way um, and try IoT and look at blockchain technology and things like that. And of course, there's the opposite of the spectrum where you have these businesses that met, never met a new technology or hype technology they didn't like. But the reality is you're going to have to take some risk and you have some courage to make some investments and do some things. Even if they you know, result in failures and mistakes, um, you, if you're not out there trying, you're not failing, and you need to try new stuff all the time. It's just the way it goes. Yeah, it really is. And um, Thanks, Dave. Top three tips. Really enjoyed those. And uh, thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. Always a pleasure. Excellent, and thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's C Suite show. You can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Limpicum. I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. I'm sure there's some blue graphics flying around the screen right now. Uh, you can get us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all the social media things, as I already repeat myself every week. Remember to like, subscribe, and share the channel and the videos with your friends and colleagues. The, the support we get is great on uh, social media. So thanks for all your feedback as well and your comments. Uh, and all your retweets as well. I know that's a, a big thing at the moment. So we're getting lots of retweets on all our uh, blog posts and stuff like that. And uh, in the description box below, there are links to all of the blogs that Dave writes for us as well. So check those out. And we're also on podcasts. So we've got this on iTunes and Stitcher. So you can check us out on the iOS and Android. Again, thanks for watching. And until next week.